What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pat Taste Performance. Today in the driveway is our Billy Goat. Um, it's like 20 something degrees. I think it's like 21, 22 degrees out. With the wind chill, it's about 10, 12 degrees. So there was a lot of this video that I had to eliminate from the first one that you guys seen. Because I'm not sure if the microphone got cold and froze and shortened the battery, whatever. So when we're done with this video, I will put that footage at the end that you guys missed out on. And I will put it to some Tchaikovsky 1812 Overture. It's gonna be no sound. I was going to put a, do a voiceover, but I decided not to. So it's part two. So this was here for a no start and e tune up. And like anything else, I thought it was the carb. In my defense, I did a spectacular diagnosis. I didn't do anything wrong, right? Put some go go juice right into the carb with some fresh fuel, and it would run and die. Catch on fire. <laughs> I wish they were sound for that. I'd rather not tell you the words that came out of my mouth. Well, I had to refrain, but you could see me fighting my words because, you know, YouTube friendly. Well, you can, but we just choose not to. Anyhow, um, fresh fuel with some sea foam. And you see me do this time and time and time and again. I have brought back machines not running using seafoam. And I just did a quick and dirty carburetor on here. And seafoam got it running, right? And then they actually did a video doing the front of the house, a nice little action video for you guys, which I'll show at the end of the video. But again, there's gonna be no sound. So it says, okay, done. And when I got done using it, I changed the oil because that was part of the tune up. And this thing fired right back up. Well, it should. Of course, it was hot from being used. So I, I have the pleasure of having this for the next couple of days because just the guy wasn't around and I wasn't around as well. And I said, you know what, let me just fire it up one more time. And I'm glad I did because it didn't start. And then I started beating my brains out. So let me just see if it still starts now. Has been used in a couple of days, it is 12 degrees out. So let's be generous with how many pulls this thing is gonna take. This is hot, I mean cold. Okay, two. Remove the choke. Now it's low speed, which we get it. Oh, come on. Come on, don't do this. Maybe it's just too cold to play with it just yet. Yeah, it's too cold. And then I'll go over this, this, this thing. I missed it. I missed this oversight. And I was actually talking to Double Wide Six about this too. I couldn't believe it. So anyhow, now I started to not say panic, but get a little aggravated because this thing would only run and die. This thing would only start if I used ether. And then I took a closer look at something and you know, I've only worked on maybe two or three of these machines with an actual choke on it. This is not an auto choke where you have to, where you have to do it el manuel. So let me bring it down and I'll show you. All right, so meanwhile, as I grab something so I could lean on, put my knees on, it's really cold, I don't wanna put my knees on the ground. Um, <clears throat> I second guessed myself, which is fine, you're allowed to do that. And what I started to do is, I took the carburetor off the machine and I cleaned it. It's only I think a 20 or $30 carburetor. So I'm like, all right, I'll just, you know, I'll do a complete clean. And that still didn't work. So I said, maybe I'm missing something. I am. I wasn't there yet. I took it off again and I actually put it in my ultrasonic cleaner. 
and the problem still persisted. So in all of my aggravation, I had to take a step back, walk away, and I found that this is our choke. Let's see if it can zoom in on the choke. Come on, baby. But the only way to see this maybe is a good angle shot. And you guys can see the choke lever. Right here, where you see it was open. Hold on. All right, stay, stay. It was actually open in the, when it should be in the closed position. And I started banging my head from there. Because, like I said, I really haven't worked on these machines. I said, how could this thing be open if it's controlled by the lever up top? Then there has to be, you know, there's something wrong. How could this, how could this not control it? So I thought, all right, maybe there's supposed to be another cable for the choke. Like, how does this work out? Because on lawn mowers, this is technically a lawn mower engine. You know, I've seen it where they have it just for the choke. And that was not the case. I started thinking maybe this cable was missing and broke, and it was not. So here it is in the open position, and we're going to put this lever all the way down. And now you can see it's closed all the way. All right, there we go. This is a better angle. That's what I feel. All right, so the choke is actually closed, and then we're gonna open it up. And I'm like, how could this, how could this be? So I started to, to break down this machine in my mind, and it led me to this over here. So it led me to the tr this throttle slash choke assembly. It's all in one. Cable comes to here. It's connected to this lever, which is on a spring, which gives it tension. And pay attention to this, to this arm right here. See that? As this arm goes up and down, can we get the arm in the token one shot? Yes, we can. So as this arm goes up and down, it controls the choke flap opening and closing. And I says, okay, we are getting warmer and closer to the issue here. So when I started to maybe think that because this was rusted, it was binding somewhere. So I'm like, oh, you know, it's a real pain for me to take all this apart and, 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 and grind this down and, and paint it. I'm like, you know, that's money, that, that's time, that's money. He says, eh, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna, he'll be down for that, you know? Um, so I covered it with lube and I kept working it back and forth and nothing changed. He says, you know what, the guy said that he, that he was in there and they had it running at some point. And, uh, you know, maybe they did something that they shouldn't have done before. And I kind of thought that was the real deal because, <laughs> Believe it or not, they had this arm in the wrong assembly. I can only move this by hand. If I was trying to move it by the cable, it was very, very stiff. So what I did is I undid this here to Phillips number two. So I'm gonna zoom you guys out because I know when I go in there, it might mess up the shot. But let's see. All right, so this is a Phillips number two. So all you have to do is Undo this. And this comes out nice and easy. It didn't come out nice and easy because this thing is covered in anti-seize. 
Okay, then what you also have to do is undo one of these springs so it's hanging. Okay, and I want to show you something because this is what messed me up. See, there's two different diameters. The top one is bigger than the bottom, and they had the biggest one up top. So I adjusted it, and the pulley kept sliding out on me. I originally thought, you see this here? See that? It almost looks like it's missing one up top, because if you go here, look. You have two openings here and here. So I thought maybe, because these guys were in here, and they messed it up. See here and here, that maybe this cable was sliding. I says, hey, you know what, let me flip this to where this is at. So what we're gonna do now is, because the cable is, see there's no tension, you have to remove the spring. These people die in somebody else's time. That one. Um, so see here. Remember, we're, oh, I'm blocking you. See how we're, see how that's moving? Remember that? And then you can see the choke all the way in the corner over here. So you have to hold this, pin this. I have the thin side facing up of this bracket mm -mm -mm. and then we're just gonna kind of lock this into place but remember the skinny part on this machine has to be up I don't know how the bottom came you know I don't know how this bracket you know was flipped I do not I assume that somebody else was in here so I pulled the tight and I'm holding it tight. And you have to wash the choke and the carburetor at the same time. As long as that flap stays closed. You're good to go. And then you just hook this back in. You just hook the spring, you know, back in. I can't tell you this one. I can't stress this anymore. Do not try and do this with the spring still attached. All right, so I'm just gonna run this again one more time for you guys, just a little bit of an action video so you guys could hear it, suck some leaves up. At the end of this video, when I do my outro, if you guys wanna hang around, you will get the lost footage of this machine. But you're gonna see some of it, um, you know, me actually using it, I think it does pretty well, but I was very curious to see if this was just as good as my other Billy Goat, you know, my monster Billy Goat that I have, that I got for my scrap guy for 10 bucks. That's 10 horsepower. I think these Hondas are rated for like, what, 5.5? Six horsepower? Um, yeah. I'm gonna keep mine. I'm gonna keep mine. I'll tell you one thing right now. If this had, um, you know, uh, a Koma Sakyama, to put the branches in, shredder, then I would go after this. I'd probably offer to buy this from him because he's, uh, he's thinking about selling it. But uh, we're out of season and uh, no thank you. So anyway, I freed up this handle here. It's got some any season here. So let me just crank this down. Oh. We'll get this fired up. And then uh, we'll take it over to the street and we'll see what little mess we got. Or maybe we'll run it on the front lawn. We'll see. We'll do a little, well, I don't know, a little action show. Come on. It's catching. Don't tell me I messed this up because I helped you guys out. This was running before I touched it. Yeah, 
this, is, this should be enough to to get this going. Uh, the things I do for you guys. What's happening? What's happening? Oh boy. You're joking, right? Did I not mess this up? I could have sworn this is in the clothes. I'm a little short. I'm a little short and I'll show you. Wow. This little much makes that much of a difference. You see that? This is with the choke all the way down and gate on the cable. And check this out. See that little bit of movement? That's the nose start. So let me readjust this. All right, so I just made the adjustment. We should be good to go. I wanna choke you guys. <laughs> See the joke? Choke, choke. All right, down one more time. There we go. That warm up. Let me check the property. So I have a little bit right here, and uh, that just builds up in the corner. So we'll run the goat over that.
Yeah, so this thing kind of sucks. Well, just watch the demo video. It actually did a pretty good job. But I think, remember, this is all compact at the corner where it's built up. I had to break it up using my uh, organic shovel. So, uh, you know, with that being said, a little cold wrap. I've been out here all day. And uh, these hands keep getting swollen. And I keep running in and out of the house to, uh, to bring them back down to a workable you know, enjoyable size. So, you know, like I said, after this video, I'm gonna do the uh, lost footage of this and uh, enjoy it and tell me what you think or not. All right, guys, if you guys found this video helpful, smash like button, smash subscribe button, guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Performance. Later.